Okay, folks, this is part two of The Lock Whisperer. Part two, so if you haven't heard part one, go back and listen to that or you won't know what's going on. Okay, so Club 40 Audio, Facebook, like us, Tumblr, read us, Patreon, give us money, SoundCloud, listen here too. Don't forget to subscribe and ring our bell. And of course, support us at club40audio.bandcamp.com. And again, happy Halloween. All right, let's go straight into The Lock Whisperer. Club 40 Audio presents The Factory. We'll see about this. Professor, no, don't! Have at you, my fine fellow! Ah! Come back here, you little dickens! Oh, my ears. Professor! I'm all right, Dorothy. I'm all right. It's gone. What happened? What is that? Oh, this? (laughs) It would seem to be a nightgown of some sort. Presumably torn from someone's laundry line. What did you say? What was at the door? The lock whisperer, one must assume. But he had draped himself in this. Very strange. He wasn't wearing it properly. Whatever was at the door was far too short for that. Instead, it was draped like a sheet over it. And when I reached for it, it came away with ease. And what was under the sheet? Why, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, Professor! I did see what looked like a black shadow fleeing away from me in the darkness. But without any street lamps, I couldn't make out any details. Except it was humanoid. Humanoid? But not human? Decidedly not. No child. No human child. Or Midget could have made that noise. What was that? What happened? It would seem the Lock Whisperer paid your house a visit. I went out to greet him. You... you you saw it? In a manner of speaking, yes. And you are still alive. How are you still alive? An excellent question. One I will take up with the Lock Whisperer when we meet again. But it would seem that he is not... Professor! Right! Follow me! Mayor, lock your door after us! Ooh, where to, Prof? I, I don't know. There was only the single scream. Did anyone see anything? Where did that scream come from? Oh, there! My old man Willoughby's house! Thank you! Professor! I see it. I see it, Dorothy. We're too late. Dust. (sighs) He's been turned to dust. Nothing but his bones left. Yes. But do you smell that, Dorothy? I'm not sure. (laughs) What, um... (sighs) What am I smelling for? That... that peculiar (sighs) odour. It's just like... Just like the smell of earth after rain? No. No, Dorothy. Not after the rain. Just before it. More specifically, before a lightning storm. Ozone. What's that? A peculiar mix of oxygen. Three atoms of oxygen together. Something that is only caused by... By electricity? Precisely. There's been a massive discharge of electrical energy... And there's another smell I've noticed, or rather that I've noticed its absence. What? Char. The smell of a human body being cooked in its own juices. Oh, Professor! My apologies, my dear, but it is an important observation. This man was not struck by lightning, for there are no burn marks upon the ground, nor on his clothes. 
as there most certainly would have been. Also, I've never known of a lightning strike to completely dissolve a human body. What's all this, then? It would seem the Lock Whisperer has taken another victim. And who might you be, mister? Say, wait a minute. You're that professor bloke I saw selling your wares in town. That I am, my good lad. And I can see from your uniform that you are the constable. That's right, I am. Leastways at night, I am. There's another man that has the job in the daytime. Sub every second Tuesday. Splendid. Be a good lad and run for the local doctor. We ain't got a local doctor no more. And why, pray, do you not? Oh, that's him lying in the street. Or what's left of him, isn't it? Oh, dear. How do you know? Well, that's his clothes, to be sure. That, and I found his bag lying in the street back there. Ah, so it would seem. Here now, what's that you're doing? I'm collecting a sample for scientific analysis. <laughs> That's desecration of a corpse, it is. Perhaps, but it's the only way to find out what happened to him. As if you didn't know. You might as well confess. Make an easy job of it. Confess? Confess to what? Why, running the doctor down and turning him to dust. You think we did this? It's not a matter of what I think. It's a matter of what the evidence says. And the two of you is the only ones are standing over the body. My good man, I can assure you that not two minutes before this man died, we were in the house of your mayor, attempting to assist in the apprehension of whatever beastie stalks your town at night. That'll be a matter for us to question him on in the morning. In the morning? Why not take us to his door right now and ask him about it? I can't do that, Missy. Tis after ten o'clock when all good Christians should be abed. I can't be disturbing his honour the mayor this late for anything less than an emergency. Honestly, Professor, it's too early for you to be playing into stereotypes. A bit too much, you think? Too much? <sighs> oh, too early. While you are wasting the nocturnal hours asleep, my brain has been turning over our problem. Mm. How do we get out of jail? No, 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 they'll be taken care of shortly enough. The mayor will set all that to right. No, I was thinking about the doctor who was killed last night. I'm amazed I could sleep after seeing that. But it's hardly the worst thing I've seen since I've joined up with you. It was little more than a pile of dust. For dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Oh, Genesis 3.19. Quite. It's good to know you haven't neglected your reading. However, in this man's case, the process has been auspiciously expedited. Sometimes I think you just like to string words together just because of the way they sound, rather than actually making sense. Dorothy, do you know what is the one thing that keeps a human body from dissolving into dust at any given moment? Cellular density? Aided by what is in every single cell of the human body. Water. Every last drop of water was removed from this man's body, reducing him to his most base elements. All right, Prof. I'll bite. Oh, wise professor, what on earth could possibly do that to a human? Your melodramatic antics notwithstanding, it is a question which I do not yet have an answer to. It is certainly not a child or a midget covered by a sheet. Oh, Professor Marvel, I'm so sorry you spent the night locked up in here. The constable will be severely reprimanded for what he's done. Not at all, sir. It's actually one of the more comfortable jail cells I've ever had the pleasure of occupying. Speak for yourself. I believe I was. I assume the crime scene has already been dusted up. Some of the townsfolk did take that liberty, sir, I regret to say. However... I was able to have his clothes collected from the scene, and they won't be buried with the man or what remained of him. Not until we have your say-so. How kind of you. 
Please have them brought to my cart. I shall wish to examine them, though I doubt they shall be of much aid now. And so the Lock Whisperer claims another life. Oh, my dear Mayor, I can assure you whatever claimed the life of the town doctor last night was most certainly not the Lock Whisperer. At least not the creature I saw. What makes you say that, Professor? The thing under the nightgown last night was a timid creature. I started it off merely by opening the door. It screamed at me and tried to scare me back inside, but when I confronted it, it ran. Now, surely, any creature capable of turning a full-grown man into dust in a matter of seconds, a minute at the most, would have no qualms about doing it to a man who happened to be coming out of a house, as opposed to a man who was walking down the middle of a street. But if it wasn't the Lock Whisperer, then what was it? And why turn a man to dust? Six men, actually. Five before and the doctor last night. Of course, I don't know as of yet. I've been divorced from my equipment all night. Though I shall have some answers soon enough. Mr. Mayor, if you would be so kind, I would like you to send that young constable around and find out exactly how many people in this town are capable of reading. Reading? Yes, it's the ability to look at symbols on a page and turn them into proper sounds and extract information. Hilarious, Professor. Yes, I rather thought so. What does the ability to read have to do with any of this? Perhaps nothing. Perhaps everything. But I want the constable back at my car with a full list of names before tea time. Meanwhile, I'll be conducting experiments. Oh, there you are, Dorothy. Yes, Professor. Brought you some mutton if you're hungry. Quite kind of you, my dear. But at the moment, the only thing I hunger for is knowledge. Suit yourself. I always do. Thank you. Also, would you mark down that I sold three bottles of hair tonic and two bottles of lanolin? I would have done it myself, but I was quite busy at the time. Right, sure. Any new revelations? Something quite fascinating, actually. You will recall my telling you that the causation of these men turning into dust was that every drop of moisture had been drawn from their bodies? Yes. Well, it turns out the moisture was not the only thing that's missing from this sample. What else is missing? She asked, a quiver with anticipation. Salts. You've heard the expression, a man is not worth his salt, I assume. Well, these men had theirs removed. But how would they manage that? How could you separate the salts out of a human body and dissolve it completely in a matter of minutes, let alone days or weeks? How indeed. The answer lies in the absence of water. Here, look at this. I have placed these two electrical leads into a glass of purified water. Now, I turn the hand crank on this electrostatic generator. Would you be so good as to read off the numbers on the gauge? There's next to nothing, Professor. That's right, because the purified water is not a good conductor of electricity. But now, watch what happens when I add just a teaspoon of table salt to the same glass of water. Much better. Almost half the gauges lit up. Correct. And one might assume that a similar reaction might have occurred when the powdered remains of the good doctor were put into water. Here is that beaker. But observe. Nothing. It's exactly the same as the purified water. Exactly. The reason is that all the salts, iron, electrolytes, everything that was a good conductor of electricity has been removed. All right, Paul, fall by. How was it done? By an extension of the very same process which you have just observed, Dorothy. Electrolysis. You've lost me. Do you recall that strange smell we noted just last night? Not the smell of cooked flesh, but the peculiar odour that many have noted just before a thunderstorm? Ozone. Electrolysis. A process of separating chemicals in a fluid solution. One of its side effects is a large quantity of ozone. In essence, the creature that attacked the doctor last night is a walking electrolysis factory. He separates all the nutrients he needs. He absorbs them, not by eating, but by electrolysis. The water is absorbed and evaporated taking with it all the man's electrolytes and leaving behind nothing but piles of dust. Very efficient. You almost sound as if you admire this thing. I admire its purity. 
All the same, we need to stop it. But now we know how it works. And perhaps there's a way to put a halt to its nocturnal homicidal activity. Speaking of which, where is the constable with that list of names? It's well past tea time. All this talk of people being evaporated would have put me off my tea. If I'd had any. But, Professor, if the thing that murdered the Doctor and the Lock Whisperer are not the same thing, what's the connection? An excellent question. The Lock Whisperer seems to have a different agenda. Until now, the people of this town have believed that he was here to torment them, and that his cries were meant to intimidate. But what if he's been protecting them the whole time? Think about his warning. Are the children in their beds? People believed it to be a threat. If your children aren't in bed, I'm going to eat them. But what if he really has their welfare in mind? And perhaps you didn't hear what I heard. When he approached the door, he said, Are the children in their beds? But he followed it up with, For it's nearly ten o'clock. And his choice of attire can hardly be overlooked. Wee Willy Winky, are you serious? Do you mean to say that Wee Willy Winky is real? That he's some kind of night spirit? No, 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 of course not. Any man of science knows that spirits and fairies are all nonsense and tommy rot. However, that doesn't mean that something didn't hear the rhyme and adopt the persona. But why all the subterfuge? Why not come right out and say, Hey folks, here's a dirty great monster running around in the night. If you don't stay inside and lock your doors, he's going to turn you into a refreshing beverage pack chock full of electrolytes. Perhaps he doesn't know how to. It's possible that he heard the rhyme and understood just enough to repeat the last sentence of the first stanza. Perhaps he is like some birds, who can only repeat the sounds he hears, and all he knows is the sounds he is repeating produce the desired result. The universe is full of a diverse variety of strange creatures, my dear Dorothy, and until one has actually met them, it's not always wise to assume their lack of intelligence. Perhaps not even then. Where is that constable? I'll tell you where the constable is, Professor. I can tell you exactly where he is. As in moves since I left him. And how can you be sure of that? I'll tell you how. He's dead. Part two? There are lines for part two? Oh, fine, fine. I, I, yes, of course I can read them. <sighs> um, in part two of The Lock Whisperer, the part of Dorothy was played by Kendra Akers. The part of the mayor was played by Jack Ward. The part of the constable was played by Josh Momley. D didn't he play someone else before? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, and Wesley Critchfield was Professor Marvel. Hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Well, th there he is again. Uh, it's almost as if he was self-aggrandizing. The Lock Whisperer is an original story written, produced, edited, and directed for Club 40 Audio by Wesley Critchfield. Four credits? D d does this man really need four credits? <laughs> written, produced, edited, directed? It's almost like he doesn't know enough to spread the blame around. Don't forget to subscribe and ring our bell to keep up with every time we post a new episode. Give us a like on Facebook and keep up with everything Club 40 Audio has to offer. Hmm. Listen on SoundCloud and read more about us on Tumblr. And don't forget to support us by buying this and every episode for a dollar or pay what you like at club40audio.bandcamp.com. That's club, the number 40, audio.bandcamp.com. Please consider becoming a patron and supporting us on Patreon. Is this the last one? Two more? Two? Oh, fine, fine, I'll read them too. The Factory is a production of Club 40 Audio, and as usual, all rights are reserved. <laughs>